I want to thank you all for being here today, and I am honored that you would join me to present the state of our city. Uh, to my colleagues on the board of directors, I want to thank you for your continued service uh, to our city. I'm truly proud to serve alongside you, uh, and also to our hardworking employees in every city department. Thank you for everything you do to make this city a great city. Our city manager, Bruce Moore, uh, says it often, and I see it every day, we are truly a family, and that bond shows through the work that you do. It's been a rough couple of weeks uh, for many of us with the loss of our friends, city employees Houston Messler and Toya Robinson, but they and their families remain in our thoughts and prayers. And to our businesses, both large and small, and to our nonprofit partners, to our faith-based leaders, and to the countless volunteers who give your time, I want to say thank you for all that you contribute to our community. A, two, a 2016 Volunteer Community of the Year, I might add, uh, as awarded by Arkansas Business. We truly could not do all that we do without your collective help. And as citizens of the city of Little Rock, I want to thank our citizens for giving us the unique privilege and giving me the unique privilege of serving as your mayor. <clears throat> as you know, this past year has uh, truly been a year of construction uh, for the city of Little Rock. We have seen the completion of the Broadway Bridge, the opening of the Robinson Center's second act. We cut the ribbon on the Josephine Pankey Community Center and Police Substation. We opened a state-of-the-art $12 million ambulance facility. We moved into the new technology park. And of course, we christened this beautiful West Central Community Center. So thank you to City Director Doris Wright for your steadfast insistence and perseverance. And to your colleagues who voted to approve the construction of the center. And of course, uh, to all the residents and children in this area that are going to use this. You know, it's been a very good year in the city of Little Rock. And of course, there are some challenges that we still need to tackle. And I would like to talk to you about those. Today, I want to tell you about some metaphorical construction work that we have been doing as a city these past few years. Because our foundation remains strong. The, framework of our, the frameworks are being expanded and guided, and now the work remains to make sure that we are investing in our citizens so that the capital city can be the crown jewel that it is poised to be. All good building projects have to start with a strong foundation, and we have set out together through various efforts to shore up our city foundation. You will recall in 2008 during the recession, we were creative. We refunded and extended our park bonds to accomplish improvements in every ward of our city, including the acquisition of Western Hills, a facelift for War Memorial Park, soccer fields out west, and major improvements to Crump Park in the south end. Then in 2011, we came together as a community and realized that we simply could not be the community that we wanted to be without an additional investment in infrastructure. So streets, drainage, police officers, firefighters, the West Little Rock Fire Station, the 12th Street Station, all these and more. We've seen millions of dollars invested in infrastructure projects that improve our city that would not have been responsible, would not have been possible, rather, without the support of our citizens who love the city. Together, that foundation has been stabilized one penny at a time, and we all, and we still have a half a percent less in local sales tax than virtually all the cities in Northwest Arkansas and in our immediately surrounding area. Part of the foundation of a city is also a healthy heart. Downtown, in the heart of our city, we are seeing a renaissance. Take a moment with me and picture yourself walking east on Markham Street from City Hall. 20 years ago, you would have seen a row of mostly vacant warehouses and buildings. Now picture it today. We have a brand new iconic Broadway bridge with improved pedestrian and bicycle facilities soon to open, connecting to our Arkansas River Trail. There is a world-class performing arts venue, the Robinson Center, with a brand new convention and meeting space overlooking the Arkansas River, and a newly renovated Doubletree Hotel. Restaurants and businesses abound. Institutions like the Old State House, Marriott, and the Capitol Hotel remain. Continue on through the vibrant river market district and Ottenheimer Hall to Clinton Presidential Center, which is flanked by the Heifer International. Our State House Convention Center is stronger than ever. 
with an annual attendance of over 308,000 people. Now, if you take a look south, down Main Street, you will see inviting streetscapes, outdoor art, renovated historic buildings with restaurants and businesses, and new infill and vacant lots. Beyond that, you can picture SOMA, south on Main, as an eclectic array of businesses south of Interstate 630. So the heart is beating stronger than ever, and it isn't slowing down anytime soon. So once we have this solid foundation, and once it's in place, it allows us then to get to work on framing our metaphorical building. What are these frameworks? One key framework for the building of a world-class city is the ability for citizens to earn a living. And to do this, we first must weather, we had to first weather the Great Recession. And I am glad to report that the Little Rock metro area unemployment rate now stands at 3.6%. That is less than half the 7.4% in 2011. And currently it stands in a tie for the second lowest rate in the South. That leaves This leaves our unemployment rate lower than all other southern cities. Nashville, Memphis, Atlanta, New Orleans, Louisville, Chattanooga, Tallahassee, and others. And nationally, unemployment rates are lower than the city of Des Moines, San Antonio, Dallas-Fort Worth, Oklahoma City, Minneapolis-St. Paul, Indianapolis, Seattle, Kansas City, Tulsa, Santa Fe, Albuquerque. All of these cities, our unemployment rate is lower. That is something that our citizens and our city and our state should be proud of. This economic growth continued in 2016 with the Little Rock metro area adding more than 750 new jobs, over $25 million in new payroll, $43 million in new capital investment. The average wages have grown 28% since 2005 and personal income has grown 25%. This past year we've seen Federal Express open a 303,000 square foot distribution center, a $50 million investment that employs 175. TY Garments USA close on a building at the Little Rock Port that will be the first Chinese company to manufacture clothing in the United States and to create 400 new jobs, a $20 million capital investment. Sprint open a regional headquarters that has brought, 20, that has brought 100 new full-time jobs to, uh, to Little Rock. Envoy Air, a subsidiary of American Airlines, located at the airport with a $2 million investment and 60 new jobs. HIA Velo, a company you may not have heard of, announced that they will be making high quality bicycles right here in Little Rock with 50 new jobs. By the way, HIA stands for Handmade in America. I know uh, our president probably will enjoy that. <laughs> Gotta get a laugh out of somebody here. Uh, LM Wind Power opened a new $12 million international headquarters, keeping them here in Little Rock. Bank of the Ozarks breaking ground on their new 180,000 square foot facility to keep their phenomenal growth here in Little Rock. And we have seen Main Street jump alive with activity with over $125 million in new private sector investment. And we also continue to see growth uh, throughout the city in retail with additional construction and stores and restaurants opening at the Gateway Town Center in Southwest Little Rock and in other parts of the city. You know, as mayor, we love these big projects, but as a 21st century city, we also have to have a framework that breeds innovation, entrepreneurship, and creativity for the jobs of the 21st century. Little Rock is embracing this calling like never before. With the Venture Center and the opening of Phase 1 of the Technology Park, a $25 million investment, I look forward to seeing the collaboration and successes that are going to come from the collision of ideas between uh, entrepreneurs, technology companies, artists, creative talent inhabiting the creative corridor on Main Street, where soon hundreds will live, work, and play. We have started Phase 2 of the Low Impact Development Street Safe construction adjacent to Repertory Theater. Ballet Arkansas is in its new home and we look forward to the location of the University of Arkansas's executive MBA program on Main Street in the very near future. 
housing is being constructed on Main Street and the Donaghy building, that big tall 12-story building that's been vacant for many years is under contract for 155 apartments. All told, there will be nearly 400 housing units in the Creative Corridor, truly transforming Main Street into a 24-7 environment where ideas and creativity can flourish. Now, that's our physical framework, but through the work of the Venture Center and the city and individual entrepreneurs and, and, and companies, an intellectual and creative framework also is being built that is going to foster the growth of this city's new economy in the coming decades. It's already taking root with the Venture Center member companies uh, who alone have created 286 jobs in the last two and a half years. They've raised $19 million in capital and they have served 112 businesses generating $12 million in revenue. Quite an accomplishment in the brief period of time they've been created. One of the most exciting things to happen this past year was the FinTech Accelerator put on by the Venture Center with Fidelity Information Services, better known as FIS, who brought in 10 companies from around the world to Little Rock for a rigorous 12-week program designed to accelerate grow the growth of early stage financial technology services startups. These companies received access to the FIS C-suite, intense mentorship from across the city, and $50,000. Then the top three received a further share of a half a million dollar investment in dollars by FIS. It was an immense success with three companies, PFitter, Mortgage Peer, and Lumo Exchange, choosing to be based here in Little Rock and moving from their headquarters out of state. FIS is so committed that FinTech 2.0 will start in May, and this year 295 companies from around the world are competing for the 10 coveted spots. This is really cool stuff, it really is. Uh, technology companies are the way to put Little Rock on the map and give us the distinction that we deserve. Last year, in an effort to better understand how we as a city and other cities can help with this framework, I conducted the Mayor's Summit on Entrepreneurship uh, here in Little Rock in conjunction with the Kauffman Foundation out of Kansas City. It brought together 150 local entrepreneurs, economic developers, mayors, and city staff for an open dialogue about the status of our startup ecosystem. You should know that we were one of four cities to be highlighted by Kauffman's National Entrepreneurship Conference last year, a much appreciated recognition and a testament to the creative genius here in our capital city. For too long, cities have left innovation to the private sector. But I'm proud to tell you that Little Rock is part of a group of cities that, per, uh, that are changing that perception by implementing smart cities strategies. And to that end, we have been selected to, to be a part of a national initiative called What Works Cities, working with cities across the country and industry experts to enhance our use of data and evidence to engage citizens, making government more effective and improving lives. I am excited about the potential of our new performance innovation coordinator, Melissa Bridges, who's going to help implement these ideas. She will be able, you will be able to access, uh, access, excuse me, access this growing number of tools uh, through the city's interactive website, which was launched last year thanks to the great effort of our IT department. You can now find us at www.littlerock.gov, no more .org. And while you are there, you should uh, click on the e-news section uh, at the top and sign up for my weekly newsletter, Monday Mornings with the Mayor. And of course, it does come out on Monday morning. I'd like to have you all subscribe. More of our citizens will now be able to access a new website thanks to a Connect Home initiative that we started last year, which is helping our city bridge the digital divide by leveraging partners such as the Metropolitan Housing Authority, our public housing uh, organization, the Clinton Foundation, the Little Rock School District, Best Buy, and others to bring education, hardware, and affordable internet service to our, hub, to our public housing residents in the city. We were thrilled to be able to connect over 200 households to the internet for the first time, have over 100 residents, including school-aged children, receive a tablet or a computer, and over 200 residents complete digital literacy training. We are, have even loftier goals 
for the second year of this program. I am also working on a new project that will further define us as a smart city and put a wealth of information at the fingertips of residents and visitors, as well as provide strategic tools for our small businesses. So stay tuned this summer for more on this exciting smart city project. Obviously, we want Little Rock to be a place where people want to live and visit. So another key framework for a successful city is to position ourselves as a place where people want to be, where they want to live, where they want to work, raise a family, and have others visit. The most tangible stride we've made this past year in this regard is, of course, the opening on time and on budget of the completely renovated Robinson Center and Concert Hall. This gorgeous facility provides the city a world-class performing arts venue, a top-of-the-line convention meeting place, and it does it in a timeless facade of the original Joseph T. Robinson Auditorium. I look forward to the many new memories uh, made uh, by Little Rock residents in this space and to those happy memories that will be left in the minds of our visitors. Pulaski County saw plenty of these visitors in 2016. It was a banner year with $1.8 billion generated in travel spending. That is a full 25% of the state's total. 6.18 million visitors, which is 22% of the state's total, and 140,500 room nights booked. A 39% increase in the AMP tax collections was also realized over the last 10 years. So it's important to recognize how important tourism is to our city. And I think we have stepped up to the plate in a beautiful way. It's also important for a city to provide quality of life amenities. And to that end, our Parks and Recreation Department had another stellar year. Not only did they build this beautiful facility here, but they achieved reaccreditation through the National uh, Recreation and Park Association. And they successfully complied with all 151 standards. A fantastic and first time achievement. Our Parks Department, Truman, you should be congratulated. I want you to know that they are the only accredited Parks and Recreation Department in Arkansas. And they also put on, a, of course, uh, the tradition of another successful mar marathon with over 14,000 participants during the race weekend. And guess what? That was a $6 million estimated impact, uh, economic impact injection into the city over one weekend. The Little Rock Animal Village, Director Adcock's favorite, uh, had a record year last year with 1,830 adoptions. And of course, speaking of animals, the Little Rock Zoo welcomed the opening of the new Arkansas Heritage Farm exhibit in April of last year in conjunction with Heifer International, which allows us city slickers and children to know and learn a little bit more about rural farm life. They also acquired several new animals, including a new gorilla to go along with Trudy, who will turn 61 this June making her the oldest living gorilla in captivity in the world. So, what a fantastic way to spend the day or an evening at the Little Rock Zoo with Trudy. <laughs> Little, Rock, Little Rock has, in recent years, made sustainability a very pur purposeful part of building our great quality of life. Our Sustainability Commission, Bike Friendly Community Committee, and the Keep Little Rock Beautiful, among others, are volunteers who have done yeoman's work in helping us to be a leader in the South on the issue of sustainability. This year, we were thrilled to be designated as a bronze bicycle-friendly community by the League of American Cyclists. And while there is still much work to do, this is a designation that took a tremendous amount of effort and advocacy by many in our community. Tomorrow, the Sustainability Commission will present its eighth annual Sustainability Summit, where the Sustain the Rock Awards will be presented and an update will be given on our 2020 sustainability roadmap. One thing that is sure to be highlighted is the fresh to you mobile food market, which we launched this past year. It is now rolling through the streets of Little Rock, providing access to fresh fruits and vegetables to some of our most vulnerable neighborhoods where food deserts exist. This collaborative effort by Rock Region Metro, the Arkansas Hunger Relief Alliance, Blue Cross Blue Shield, and the Mosaic Church proves that great things can happen when we work together. 
A sense of place is also very, very important in how we understand a sense of place. So this metaphorical building of ours won't do anyone any good if its occupants don't have pride and a sense of ownership going forward. So another important framework for the city is a sense of place its citizens have in their homes and in their neighborhoods. Our city directors have always understood that. That's why when stimulus funds became available, we chose to invest those directly into our neighborhoods, particularly those in the area of Little Rock Central High School. Now change doesn't happen overnight, but we are slowly seeing a sense of pride resurface as historic homes in every sense of the word are being renovated and neighborhood activity returns. This September, we will again welcome the world to that part of our town to commemorate the 60th anniversary of the bravery of the Little Rock Nine and we will celebrate the progress that we have made and be open and reflective about the progress that still remains to be done. We continue to work and help make other Little Rock neighborhoods shine. The Wright Avenue Neighborhood Association Action Plan passed last year by the Board of Directors is growing momentum thanks to the tireless and collaborative efforts and work of the citizens who live there. Plans call for improved sidewalks, tree-lined streets, improved lighting, street banners, narrower curb cuts, improved facades to the many significant structures that remain along Wright Avenue. We are also continuing to see progress in the 12th Street Corridor thanks to citizen involvement. And our Invest Health and Jumpstart initiatives, all initiatives of the city, uh, are there to help improve 12th Street. The Invest Health initiative seeks to connect health-related factors to the increased risk of crime, domestic violence, and the need to improve the streets and sidewalks in the area. The $2.8 million from, jump, from the Jumpstart initiative through Metroplan that we will be receiving hopefully next year is targeted to tackle these issues. Our land bank is starting to show progress in key neighborhoods across the city. The land banks administered through a citizen commission seeks to bank vacant lots and homes requiring significant rehabilitation so that the city uh, can spearhead revitalization in the neighborhoods in which they are located. Innovative approaches to neighborhood revitalization are being initiated in the city in other challenged areas as well, uh, particularly in the Stevens and Love neighborhoods uh, where the city has acquired properties in their name and is renovating them, which has now prompted citizens adjacent to these properties to begin to improve their properties as well. Neighborhoods also need the day-to-day -day upkeep that our Public Works Department has responded to uh, in a variety of different ways. Our sidewalk replacement program uh, has replaced over 54,000 square feet or 10, 000, over 10,000, almost 11,000 linear feet of sidewalks in 2016 util utilizing our felony reentry uh, crews where we hire felons, ex-felons, uh, to uh, uh, perform that construction work, giving them a job and giving them a skill. Of course, that's on top of the 38 miles of roads that we've resurfaced last year, the trash pickups, the bulky item pickups, the yard waste pickups, and more. They are helped by our 311 system, which is our system that allows citizens to request these services, whether by calling 311 on the phone or now utilizing our ever-improving uh, 311 app. Our 311 department last year handled almost 152,000 phone calls in the 311 call center, and a total of 106,000 uh, requests were entered during 2016. Uh, that gives you, uh, the volume gives you an idea about just the magnitude uh, of the response that the city has to, has to comply with. So let me turn a minute now to our investment in public safety. Public safety is no question, uh, our highest and, and, and most important need uh, as public servants to respond to. Yesterday, uh, at Rotary, 240 police officers and firefighters were recognized for outstanding service to our citizens, for acts of bravery, and for saving lives. And listening to the real life stories of these men and women selflessly doing their jobs should make all of us very proud of these professionals and the sheer dedication that they have to public service. It is no wonder that the Little Rock Police Department is one of only 100 departments in the country to be nationally accredited 
out of the thousands of police departments in the nation. And soon, our Little Rock Fire Department will receive its national accreditation, as Chief Summers has assured me. Our ISO Class 1 Fire Department continues to shine, answering over 30,000 alarms last year, and almost as importantly, 1,300 fire prevention programs, including a fire prevention day where thousands of children got to spend the day learning from their heroes and participating in educational activities. For those of you, uh, for those of you who don't know, ISO, uh, or uh, what's called Insurance Services Office, Class 1, means that the department is one of only 144 in the nation to receive what is considered to be a superior property fire protection distinction. And it means, what it means to us as citizens is it means lower insurance rates on our property insurance. Now let me address the issue of crime for a moment. From 2007, when many of us took office, we have seen an overall decrease in crime through 2015 of 18%. However, in 2016, we saw a 2% overall increase. Misdemeanor thefts constitute 6,340 of these offenses, which is nearly 40% of the total. Particularly vexing is that while violent crime, which constitutes 14% of the overall reports, was down 1%, homicides as a subset of that category were up 35%. Also troubling were increases in stolen vehicles and auto break-ins. Now the use of social media allows us to know about virtually every crime reported or suspicious activity occurring. So as a city, it is important for us to be transparent and tell our citizens what we are doing about it. Public safety is our number one responsibility. So, what are we doing about it? Recognizing that our police officers short, uh, are a big police officer shortage, we have embarked on an aggressive plan of recruitment. We have shortened the application process, we've amended the interview structure, we are holding four recruit classes this year, we are aggressively going after already certified police officers in other jurisdictions. Currently, we have 36 who have applied. We are offering financial incentive bonuses to become a Little Rock police officer and additional bonuses to live in the city. I and my colleagues on the board of directors are absolutely committed to eliminating our police officer shortage while also making sure that the standards are not lowered and that the recruits reflect the diversity of our community. So what are we doing now to stem the tide of violent crime? Well, of course, it's nearly impossible to predict when or where the next battery or homicide will occur. What we know is there's all too many of them. What has the police department done? This year, the police department has mobilized a 16-member violence reduction unit. And since their inception six weeks ago, they have arrested 126 suspects. They have filed 348 felony charges. They've seized narcotics in 31 cases recovered 10 stolen autos, and confiscated 28 weapons. Quite a record in that period of time. The department is turning to technology as well, using the National Integrated Ballistic Information Network, or NIBIN, to analyze shell casings recovered from different crime scenes or shot fi shots fired calls. This information is provided to the Major Crimes Division for analysis, and it has already led to the arrest of suspects in two pending homicides. The department is also using E-Trace, which allows the police to trace ownership of weapons that have been stored, seized, or recovered. Reports of shots fired are being tracked by location and neighborhood and are then routed to our patrol units and new contact teams are, of police officers are now being used to saturate these areas. The police department has vastly increased its use of field inter interview reports uh, as a tool to share between the various divisions of our department uh, and mapping every suspicious vehicle or suspicious person report. All of these tools are routed then to our five crime analysts in our major crimes and investigations unit. We are also an active member of the Department of Justice's Violence Reduction Network, where teams of national experts provide advice on new ways to prevent crime. It is important to note that violent crime is not widespread. It is in targeted zip codes and neighborhoods focused pockets of the city. This is not sci rocket science, it's not a great mystery. These areas are characterized, we know, by poverty, fragile families, limited access to jobs and education, 
easy, easy access to guns and drugs where the specter of mistrust and fear is constant. So even with these crippling structural issues, we believe change can occur. But it first has to come from within, from the citizens who live in these neighborhoods. We need your help. People in the community know who are committing these senseless acts of violence. They need to step forward and help our police solve these crimes. That's why I am calling today on citizens who know information about crime to come forward and make a difference. Make a difference in your neighborhood. And I'm also calling on those citizens who know of someone going down the wrong path to say something, whether it's to the person directly or to someone who can get them some help. This means encouraging that nephew, that grandson or friend who you know is up to no good and is carrying a weapon to put it up or to turn it into the authorities. Let's get these guns off the street. Last year, our police department recovered 920 guns in the reported incidents and arrests that they made, 920 guns. We can do more, but we need our citizens to step up and help. And despite all this, we spend $5.5 million each year on prevention and intervention programs, which place youth intervention counselors at the various neighborhoods throughout the city. And we need more. We need more volunteers and mentors to help educate our young people and tell them how important it is to get a good job and a good education. Now, on the stolen vehicle front, I want to talk about that a little bit, since uh, many of, of my colleagues on the Board of Directors have had calls constantly about this issue. Last year, we saw, as I mentioned, substantial increases as well. And I, along with uh, my city directors, attended multiple meetings with neighborhood associations and, and citizens, urging them to take all their valuables out of their vehicles and lock their cars. Most of our stolen vehicles and auto B&Es are based on easy opportunity, unlocked cars and valuables or keys or key fobs left in plain sight in the car. Oftentimes these, uh, these kinds of crimes are committed by groups of young people from other towns. Our detectives recently have arrested several individuals from North Pulaski County and Jefferson County. One prolific individual, I'll tell you who he is, his name is Barry London, he was arrested on February 21st on 20 B&Es with another 10 to 15 that our police department is probably going to attribute to him along with a couple of burglaries. The Little Rock Police Department has now authorized B&E auto de details, uh, providing our police officers with overtime pay to both uniform and plainclothes officers. And department-wide in all divisions, downtown, northwest and southwest, a report card, a report card is now being given to our citizens. These officers, as they patrol the neighborhoods at night, are checking to see if cars are locked or if valuables are left in sight, and they are then given a pass-fail report card, and it is being left on their windshield. Now, here's an example. The Rock Police Department breaking and entering auto theft prevention report card. And I want you to know that uh, one of our well-known friends received this report card. It was given by Officer Bonner on March 21st, 2017, and it was given to Clinton School Dean Skip Rutherford. <laughs> now, let me point out that Skip has obviously learned by our neighborhood association meetings. He passed. He passed. He oftentimes, he always, almost always parks on the street, and this says, uh, congratulations, your your vehicle passed inspection. Your actions help the Little Rock Police Department deter crime. So if you fail, that means you've left your door unlocked or your windows open or you've left valuables in plain view. So we need more people to help our police department. Look, you may be getting a report card. So most importantly, we know that if we work together, again, if we work together, we can see a reduction in these numbers. All these government structures are designed to build uh, and built to be an investment in our people. These systems are meant to engage and offer support to the people who need it and depend on it. And so whether it's fixing potholes and improving streets for that everyday drive to work or whether it's caring for the homeless through Jericho Way, providing case management uh, and helping the least among us with supportive housing and finding a job, all this really matters because it is an investment in our people. But our biggest investment 
needs to be in our children and their education. We know that if we are going to truly excel as a city, then we need a framework for our young people to excel in now and to equip themselves uh, to be the future leaders. A wise man once said, if you want the most for this generation, you must focus on the next generation. That is why we continue to spend $5.5 million yearly uh, on our youth intervention programs. That is why we develop a new youth master plan to ensure these programs are working. That is why we are employing over 600 young people every summer, giving them their first job and teaching them about responsibility and accountability. A program that received a National Livability Award from the U.S. Conference of Mayors. That is why we have teamed up with our Little Rock School District on programs such as Love Your School, currently in eight elementary schools, addressing the childhood obesity epidemic. That is why we put firefighter and police officer programs uh, in our school district's Metropolitan Votech Center. That is why every year we recognize our National Merit semifinalists at City Hall. And that is why, that is why we need to vote to extend the Little Rock School Millage on May 9th. The battles over turf, control, and power need to be set aside concerning this election because it is not about the adults, it's about the children. This vote is simply to extend the current bond extension, which will raise $160 million without a tax increase for long overdue upgrades to every school in the district, including a new Southwest Little Rock High School. Our children deserve this, and we as adults need to deliver. When schools do well, the community does well. It really, really matters. Another issue that's a very, very important to us is the embracement of the diversity of our community. That also really, really matters. Extending a welcoming and open embrace to our burgeoning Hispanic uh, population really matters if we want a safer community. We need this group of our citizens to trust the police. It will make our city safer. I want to thank Joan Adcock uh, our city director for her working together in the community group. Regardless of what happens in Washington, D.C., these are our neighbors who live with us and most importantly are raising their families with us as well. So despite our low unemployment rate, there are still pockets of poverty that, that exist in many areas of our city. Uh, this is often marked by houses that are boarded up or condemned or in need of great repair. So it's vitally important that we find creative ways to address these indices of poverty. Last year, I worked with the Corporation for National and Community Service uh, to, to design an AmeriCorps program directed toward helping elderly and uh, citizens on fixed incomes with their utility bills by instituting weatherization programs where AmeriCorps volunteers come and check for air leaks, they seal cracks, and they insulate homes. Last year, 41 elderly homeowners were helped in this way. Often tears of joy welled in their eyes as they thank the city and its young volunteers for this help. It made a world of difference in their lives. This year, a team of 11 uh, is on the ground and they have uh, contacted 120 Little Rock residents. They've completed 80 visual walkthroughs, reported 30 gas leaks, and completed weatherization on over 35 homes. Related to this, the city received an AmeriCorps planning grant that will allow us to develop a program to expand our current efforts and engage members in direct service in three areas, safety, energy efficiency, and housing and neighborhood revitalization. We are very, very hopeful and anticipate that our proposal for uh, uh, a new grant will be received. It's a full-time grant uh, uh, that uh, will soon give us 10 full-time and 20 half-time AmeriCorps members annually that will work in seven targeted areas of the city, creating personal safety plans, addressing security gaps, improving energy efficiency, and rehabilitating homes. This summer, uh, and that was actually modeled after what's going to be happening this summer, uh, partnering with World Changers, we will again provide much needed home repairs to approximately 35 homeowners, where young people come in and do exterior improvements to, to homes of, of elderly citizens. On the economic mobility front, which is very, very important. Our Workforce Development Board each year promotes the use of the Earned Income Tax Credit, EITC, and it also provides 
free tax preparation. Now, this year so far we've seen 300 citizens take advantage of these services. On average they receive $2,500 in return. However, it's estimated that there are over 4,000 individuals in Little Rock who are eligible. So, as a city, we need to continue to publicize these programs so that all who are eligible take advantage and put these dollars to work back in our community. Our CDBG grant money assists uh, 155 homeowners with much needed repairs. These funds provide medical assistance also uh, through a partnership with CHI St. Vincent's Health System to 7,700 persons and regularly serve 222 homebound senior citizens with hot meals through our Meals on Wheels program. Now, I mention these programs and how they help people because CDBG funding from the federal government is proposed to be eliminated by the Trump administration. The Trump administration <clears throat> also proposes to eliminate the AmeriCorps programs I just mentioned. We cannot let this happen. Other areas proposed for cuts for elimination that will impact negatively this city directly are EDA grants and Tiger grants, such as those that were received at the port, COPS funding that our police department relies on, the Minority Business Development Agency, the Low Income Energy Assistance, and the National Endowment of the Arts, the National Institute for Humanities, no more public radio, no more public television, and many, many more. We must urge Congress, as Republicans and Democrats alike, to reject this approach and listen to cities who send billions of dollars to Washington each year. Now, one of the roles a mayor has is to speak out about uh, these issues, both locally and nationally, on policies that threaten the well-being of our future and our citizens. I am very honored uh, to be able to serve in a leadership role with the National League of Cities, where, as its president next year, or in November, rather, I will be speaking out about policies that not only affect Little Rock, but will also affect cities in the entire country, all 19,000 of those cities. I could not have achieved this honor and this important role if it weren't for the management and staff of the city, my colleagues on, on the city board, the programs we have created that I have tried to highlight for you today, which have all brought Little Rock national attention and recognition. And of course, the several cities and towns in Arkansas who benefit from the wonderful educational programs that are provided by the National League of Cities. Now, as President Trump moves on to tax reform, the tax exemption for municipal bonds will be threatened. If this exemption is eliminated, it means projects such as the Robinson Center, Robinson Center renovation would never have occurred or would have cost local citizens millions of dollars more. The same with our streets and drainage bonds, parks bonds, uh, that were issued for uh, the bonds that were issued for our emergency uh, communication tower that 5,000 public safety personnel depend on. These issues before Congress affect each and every one of us and every city in America. Rest assured that I will speak out and lend my voice to do everything possible to ensure that these vital programs are continued. Another critically important issue uh, before our state legislature uh, and Congress deals with the closing of the online sales tax loophole. Nationally, $23 billion in owed sales tax goes uncollected from our online sales transactions every year. The dollar growth from the actual 2013 figure of $263 billion nationally to the 2018 forecast of $418 billion in sales is a 57.4% increase. For Little Rock, over a 36-month period of time, for which we have accurate figures from 2011 to 2013, approximately $2.3 million in sales taxes went uncollected. With online sales growing at a clip of 11% by 2018, the city will be losing over a million dollars yearly in uncollected and owed sales taxes. Congress must take action to level the playing field between online and brick and mortar retailers. Online retailers automatically enjoy a 5 to 10 percent advantage by not collecting the already existing tax. And Main Street retailers cannot keep up as a result of this growing disadvantage. The ripple effect will be lost jobs and revenue that will threaten the sustainability of our community. Our, congress our congressmen need to get in the game, they need to get in the act, 
and they need to support this legislation that's going to fix the collection and allow us to collect this already existing tax. We have work to do in this city and in this state with our, Congre with our congressional delegation, and I urge all of you to make that phone call. Be insistent. Be persistent. Our legislature, right now, can also help fix this problem, too, by passing SB 140, which requires online sellers grossing more than $100,000 to collect state and local sales taxes, and by passing HB 1388, which will require online sellers to send an annual notice of all purchases made to those of us who use the Internet for, for purchase. The passage of these two bills will help all 500 cities and towns in Arkansas. So, as a city, we are defined on how we tackle our challenges. By working together as an active and engaged citizenry, we can also be defined by our successes. Failure should not be an option. Failure cannot be an option. We will be defined as a city by how we treat our people, how we provide opportunities to men, women, and children to learn, to grow, and to excel. We will also be defined as a city by how we treat the least among us how we treat the homeless, how we treat our immigrant community, how we embrace equality regardless of race, gender, or social or economic status. But this is how we build our city. This is how we embrace our community and the people that we love who choose to live here. This is how we build a better future for our people. And this is how we will make Little Rock the next great American city in the South. So let's keep moving, working together, and thank you, and thank God, and bless all of his people.